Hi guys! Welcome back to my channel. My name is Peachy and this is Plant and Style. Field trip! We are playing in the snow, but on this video, we're gonna tackle some plant chores that are needed to be done before spring starts. So, let's go! <laughs> so, let's go! <laughs> Hi guys, so we are in my brother-in-law's house and I am here to do some plant chores because I have brought them a few plants and they are in pond and they know nothing about pond so I have brought some fertilizer and stuff and I wanted to repot one of the plants that I've gifted them that was still in soil because I didn't have pond at that time and now I was able to put together a pond mix from my old plants. Yeah, we're here to kind of help them out a little bit and feed the plants basically. So before we do that, I just want to show you the view up here because it is spectacular. Okay, so we are looking at the Bay Area. So this is the view from their balcony over here. And how cool is that? So you can see the Golden Gate Bridge from here. That's the Golden Gate Bridge right there and that's the bay bridge right there and that's san francisco that whole thing is the city san francisco and we have over here oakland i believe that is oakland so yeah this is the balcony and some plants that are struggling actually the succulents are doing great because this is a good space for the succulent and this is philodendron el choco red that i gifted them and i just brought it out here because i wanted to rinse it out it's got some extra flora nectaries and yeah, so far it's doing great. I know that it's going to do great here because of the tons of lighting that they have. This is my basket of pond things that I'm going to use right now. Oh, I want to show the other plant that I'm going to move. So this is the indoor setting. This is a propagation from my mama florida ghost philodendron florida ghost and it's doing great it pushed out a new leaf right there oh hi guys <laughs> pushed out a new leaf and that's not a real ladybug that's just a sticker i guess <laughs> oh no there is water at the bottom. That's not good. This is the plant that I wanted to move to pond because of that situation. Because they might get confused of the way they water pond versus in aerated mix. So let's take care of that. And we're just going to work out here. This guy is still great. It looks like they are filling the water reservoir. So I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to dump the water in there and replace it with fertilizer with nutrient water. It's a little bit windy, but not so much really. It's really nice out here today and it's been raining all week. Oh my goodness. But so before anything else, I need to feed this plant. So I have my basket of stuff because I'm not really sure where their stuff is, where their gardening stuff. So I brought my own. I have my handy dandy bowl and strainer. 
holy cow <laughs> it is windy okay whoa shit. i might have to bring this guy back in i don't want him to snap that would be so bad okay let me do my fertilizer so this is what i use this is the foliage pro fertilizer <laughs> very worried about this plant okay this is great for both semi-hydroponics and soil that is why i love this fertilizer and so far my plants love it too so that's what i'm gonna do and i just use a cap full for a full one gallon container so I'm going to fill it up with water real quick. So I have filled this with just tap water, but we do get really, really nice tap water here in our area. Add my fertilizer. And like I said, I just use a capful. And then I forgot my stick to stir it so I'm just gonna close it down and mix it as well as I can this way oh don't <laughs> spill it okay so okay there it is all right so I'm gonna switch out the, they just have a regular water in there. I'm gonna dump this. Okay, and then I'm gonna fill this one. Actually, I'm gonna do this also. So this is my Philodendron El Choco Red that I got as an import from Equigenera and it's been a very very easy plant overall for me but it's just too big for my space back home and i don't think that i'm giving it enough lighting as well because this plant is supposed to have red backs and as you can see it's not very red right now because uh, i didn't have that lighting condition to give it back home so i figured it will do better out here oh no what is that oh i found a bug that's not good it's a little spider but it's not spider mite it's black that's not great at all i'm gonna spray this down just in case it's got some kind of bug issues in there so I might have filled it too much, but that's okay. This plant is very thirsty and it could use an extra feeding as well. So it hasn't been fed for a while. Okay, I'm just going to get the hose and I'm going to hose it down. see any webbing so that's good but I saw some kind of mite let's kind of clean up the extra flora nectaries try out for a little bit put it on the side so it doesn't get scorched next is this guy I want to move it to pond I just uh, rinsed out the most of the soil and I can see some growth tips, some fresh root from the tip, so that's good. So I think that we got here in time to rescue this plant before the roots rot. So yeah, I'm really, really glad that we came today. So I'm going to move it to pond. 
I have brought a bucket of pond in here and I'm just rinsing the pot. And then we pot this guy in here. Adding some leka at the bottom. So this is recycled pond over here, right there. And it's got some leka mixed in because I haven't sorted that out. Usually I would sort it out. I have this strainer with big enough holes to sort the leka from the pond. And I didn't have time to do that today. So I just wanna put a layer of pond in and then add this guy. I just have this stick for support right now but when the time comes when it gets too tall so i'm probably going to give them a better way to to support it without having to use a moss pole because moss pole maintenance is not for everyone and i just think that it's not going to be good for them like they're not going to be able to handle it so it's better not to start so i'm just Filling up this pot. So this is just a to-go cup, and but I burnt some holes all around and at the bottom for some airflow and drainage. Right there, I think that is good enough. It's got a little layer of leka there so that I can have a reservoir I'm just gonna fill it all the way to the line right there at the bottom and let it submerge in there and this water is a little bit warm so hopefully we'll be happier like this all right, so there is another plant that I brought in that was in pond and I doubt it getting any nutrient at all. So I'm going to go get it. One second. This is my Luxurian Radican Hybrid. Oh, it's not mine anymore, but I gifted this to them a while back and it looks like it might need a repot as well. Actually, look at this. Um, but it's got some happy roots, actually, so I think I'm just gonna feed it. I think I'm gonna keep it the way it is for now, just because it has some good roots, as you can see, and it does not look root bound, and it's kind of happy. Uh, how it's growing right now so what i'm gonna do though is i'm gonna replace the water here i'm gonna replace with nutrient water and that should be fine once again this is the anthurium luxurian cross with radican and then we have the philodendron florida ghost Right there, philodendron, alchoco, right here. I'm just gonna wipe it down so it's not dripping everywhere. Get rid of the extra flora nectaries. Gently do that. Here she is. Oh, 
it's so beautiful this plant is so beautiful i think it's gonna do well over here i'm gonna put it back in okay so i think our work here is done for now i still have a few plants that i want to bring in um, but i need to acclimate them first into outside um, room conditions so yeah i'm trying to do them a favor by giving them a hardy plant that is very easy to care for and also in pond and in self-watering substrate so that it will also make caring for plants a lot easier and smoother especially for those kind of people who loves plants but does not have a lot of time on their hands to actually care for plants because they travel a lot and that's their lifestyle so yeah i'm just here to try to help out and also to share some plants with them. so yeah so these plants are doing great which is i'm very very happy about and um, hopefully we can add more plants in their home someday and we can give you a proper tour. So let's see you at home. Hi guys, we made it back home and it's very dark and gloomy now and there's also a little bit of drizzle here and there. So bear with me as we do more plant chores because this one right here is needed to be done. I need to do my DIY pond mix. So I got this, this mix from Amazon. And this is what it looks like. I'll show you closer as we open the bag. Pumice is the only one missing, I think, in this mix. I have some pumice here as well. I got this locally from a nursery, local nursery. I have been using this and I really like this because they're tiny. It's very fine. It's almost similar to the ones that Lechusa has. I have this bucket here which has some holes and I want to rinse and mix them together. I wanna rinse them thoroughly since it does look very dusty i really like how small the rocks are as you can see fairly clean as well and yeah i definitely love the sizes the last time i tried this the ones i got were a lot bigger than this so this is definitely a good find so now i want to add pumice so i think i'm just gonna dump the whole thing <laughs> because yeah what's the worst that could happen i have more substrate to use i don't think that's the worst thing in the world and so i want to mix them up so the only thing that you can mess this up as far as my experience with this is adding the wrong amount of slow release fertilizer if you were to add them so what i'm gonna do is i am gonna skip that as a matter of fact i am just gonna be using my usual fertilizer which is my foliage pro super thrive and i do water with that already anyways regardless every watering so that's how my plants are going to get the nutrients. Just to play it safe because I have made the error in the past using Osmocote in my DIY pond and it burnt every single plant that I um, used it in. Which at that time was only five. I am super glad and... 
I tested it on my some common plants, which I'm <laughs> once again another lucky situation because I could have killed my entire plant collection if I wasn't careful. I just want to distribute the pumice evenly to the rest of the substrate. I love this. It looks great. The bag of rocks was actually about 40 bucks and this was 18 pounds which is cheaper than pawn and the pumice a whole bag of these was I believe like $12 but I only use a quarter for this mix so I'm gonna say less than $45 for a ton more substrate I think I really like this mix. This is my regular lechuza pond mix. And this is the pond that we just made. And as you can see, they're very, very similar in size and even in color. See that? So I think that is great. I'm just going to have to rinse it. Oh wow, it's beautiful. The color is beautiful. Look at that. It is gorgeous. It looks so vibrant. A little bit muddy and dusty. So the thing about pumice is because it's light, it will come up the surface. I'm really loving this colors. Wow, it is gorgeous. Okay, so I've decided to rinse it further using my strainer because I can see some small sand, like the broken down pumice. So I wanted to clean it up a little more. Actually, I'm gonna. As you can see, I don't like that to accumulate on my pot. So, I'm going to get rid of that. I want to rinse it as thorough as I can and get rid of the small sandy things. And we are done. So I just cleaned everything else and it looks way, way better and definitely is way cleaner than before. So it's all washed. I don't wanna I don't wanna waste that pawn. Get it all in there. And then there's another bucket. So now we have a lot of pond mix. And now I can repot a bunch of plants. Finally. <laughs> so the first plant that needs to be repotted is this beauty right here. This is my variegated philodendron green congo and it's been exactly a month since I have acquired this one from Spencer. Spencer, thank you once again. I think I've uh, misspoke your name last time. I called you Steven. My apologies. <laughs> so as you can see, we are having some meltdown over here, but that is normal coming from a fully variegated leaf. And the bottom leaves are also yellowing, but I suspect that that is due to the pot being root bound. But there are some good roots. Right there, so that's great. 
and there are also a bunch of aerial roots just crawling on top of the pot so that's another reason why it needs to be repotted and i i have been waiting for it to be fully acclimated into our home before i do anything to it because first of all i wanted to repot it into pond and i want to minimize the shock that it's going to happen to this plant because i don't want to lose this plant it is too pretty so i am just squeezing the side of the pot so that i can easily take it out just like that look at that oh it smells great i want to gently loosen it up to minimize breakage i normally just use jet setting of the hose and just hose it down It is very root bound. Holy cow. Whew. <gasps> that is some gorgeous pink root right there okay so i'm pretty happy with that i think that i have gotten rid of most of it it's not perfect but that's fine i'm gonna leave it alone i think that it looks great it's got some healthy freaking roots that is as healthy as it's going to get I don't see any rot whatsoever at all because of the very large root system over here I have decided to DIY a pot and this pot right here this is already a finished product but what it is is actually a package of four pots that i got from amazon i turned it into a self-watering pot they don't have drainage hole but i burnt holes this two bigger holes right here are going to be for my wick rope the smaller pot right here is going to be the inner pot because it sits perfectly and it's very seamless which i like so this is a self-watering uh, pot gauge and that you can buy from amazon i'll leave all of the links that i've used in this video in the description so you don't have to worry about that and i did add a bigger hole right here so i can fit this thing um, into the spot and I take this bottom out because that bottom part does not fit which works perfectly so that when I pull this thing out it doesn't come all the way so it's there's like a barrier all you need to do is to push this so it's hitting the bottom of the bigger pot and it's not the perfect size as you can see it could be taller but it's good enough for now i can't find a bigger one <laughs> right now so i've already used it in my anthurium metallicum and so far so good they work wonders and this just saves a lot of money because with this setup it only costs less than 15 dollars total for the whole package so i need to repot a lot of plants and my plants are growing so i think it's the perfect solution if you have a ton of plants and you don't want to spend a ton of money for self-watering pots that works so that's what we're going to use so all it needs now is wick rope which i have in here and 
what I'm gonna do is actually maybe half like this. I want to put a long one so that it is able to distribute the moisture all the way from the top. So let me put this in real quick. So there you go. And don't worry about this being wobbly like that. When the pond is already inside, it's going to stabilize it. And then fill it in with pond with our brand new pond and I'm very confident about this substrate that we just made because it doesn't have any fertilizer any slow release fertilizer in it so it shouldn't cause any burning because it's just rocks it's just the mixture of rocks so I need to put a little bit at the bottom. Just don't want to bury my wick. Checking the height of my rope. Yes. Okay, so I just put one scoop of my spatula. <laughs> what do you call that? And then in you go. So if you notice that I already have a wick rope in it even though it's going to be the first time for this plant to be drinking from the bottom. I just did that just to be ready for the future because I don't want to have to dig this out again just to make sure that this plant is getting the nutrient that it needs. I'm going to keep watering it the same way as I was watering it while it was still in soil for the next month just to be safe. Now it's time to put some pond in there. I'm also trying to stabilize the gauge here on the side just to make sure it's steady and straight. By doing this, you are filling in the gaps that might have been created in there. So that's what I'm doing. Don't be afraid to do that. <laughs> I want it a little higher. Shake it so that the pond will settle in. Okay. So since the pond is wet still and it's fresh and newly washed, I'm going to leave it alone. Okay, I am going to come back next week and water it from the top. And I'm just going to give it plain water. And I'm not going to give it nutrients just yet because you don't need to do that when you're transferring from one substrate to another because it needs some time to recuperate and to adjust to the new substrate first and not get stressed out with the nutrients. So it's not able to uptake nutrient just yet. Yeah, I will definitely give you an update when it's time, when we see new growth, hopefully. And I think that's it for today's video, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you enjoy this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. Hit that notification bell down below so you'll be notified when my future video drops. Again, thank you all so much. I appreciate every single one of you. And I hope to see you in my next video. Bye!